Hanoi, in 1954, reflects the ravages of long and bitter warfare. But for now, the fighting is over. The French are leaving. The Red Star flies over Hanoi as the Communist forces move in. At a conference in Geneva, an agreement has been reached. It divides Vietnam into North and South, turns over the North to the Communists, and marks the end of French colonial rule. The agreement also provides the machinery for bringing true peace to Vietnam, if the Communists act in good faith. This is a bright victory for the Communist world, and there are smiles. But not on the faces of the more than one million Vietnamese who desert their homes and flee southward rather than live under a communist regime. From then to now, the basic story of United States help to Vietnam is simple. The communists have steadily increased their pressure on South Vietnam. South Vietnam has asked for greater support to resist that pressure and has received it. So increasing communist aggression has called forth increases in the scope of United States counteraction. But United States policy has remained the same. We are committed to helping a free people defend their sovereignty. Let us trace the history of that commitment. In 1954, Vietnam is divided at the 17th parallel, as Korea was divided at the 38th. She faces the future with an imaginary line running from border to border, symbolizing a separation which is far from imaginary. In the north, Ho Chi Minh, communist leader of North Vietnam, plays the kindly, smiling grandfather. But behind the smile is a mind which is planning a reign of terror in South Vietnam, in which children and adults alike will be the victims. In South Vietnam, peace brings a fresh beginning. The people set about building new homes, new hopes. Free elections are held in the South alone when it becomes clear that the communist regime in the North has no intention of permitting genuinely free elections in its half of the country. Also in 1954, President Eisenhower pledges economic aid to assist the government of Vietnam in developing and maintaining a strong, viable state capable of resisting attempted subversion and aggression through military means. Land reforms redistribute farmlands in the South so that farmers own their fields and reap for themselves the fruit of their toil. With American economic aid, the South begins to prosper and the hopes of the people are for peace. These hopes, shared by so many in Southeast Asia, are reinforced in Manila when in 1955, the United States and others signed the Southeast Asia Collective Defense Treaty, forming CETO and guaranteeing the mutual security of Southeast Asia from armed aggression. But even as the people of the South build, North Vietnam is creating in their villages political actions